everybody, Paul at ISM, welcome to another Inbox Review. So today we're going to have a look inside the brand new 132nd scale ICM Polycarpov I-16. Now this is a quirky little Russian fighter, there it is over there. Uh, nicknamed the Donkey, I believe it was. Uh, very unusual aircraft, it's tiny, absolutely minute, even in 32nd scale it's not that big. I've had the kit before in 48th and it's minuscule. So when this was released, uh, I saw it released yesterday, uh, a Hanan, so I thought, yeah, I need to get one of those. £27.99, ICM have got a good reputation lately, I thought I'd give it a go and I'll have a look, it just arrived about an hour ago uh, and I thought we'll give it an inbox review and see what we get, it's not a lot in there, it's three sprues, it's not big at all, it's a bit of PE, uh, but I thought we'll have a look through and see what we get, I'm not aware, aware of another 30 second scale one out there, uh, certainly not a new tool and being ICM like I say this should be a good kit, so there we are. So let's over to the bench and have a look what we get in the box. Okay, doke right, so, the box. I can't get it all in shot, unfortunately. But there's the box art. As you can see, it's a quirky little aircraft. Um, I think it's a mostly wooden monocoque frame. Uh, oh, what is it? Uh, chrome magnesium. Oh, no, chrome steel. I forget now. Chrome steel spars, uh, alloy covered with par fabric as well. Quite a nice little aircraft. As you can see, I-16 Type 24. It's kit number 32001 from ICM. World War II Soviet fighter. Uh, scale 132. On the side, we have a little bit of information. There we go. One of the first monoplane fighter aircraft with tractable landing gear. Want we'll to have a little read of that? Have a little read. And then over there, we've got the box includes nice and plastic parts. So it's 182 uh, millimeters long, uh, 282 millimeters wide, 115 parts, and made in Ukraine. By ICM of 14 plus. Hope that isn't mental age because it is. I can't build this. On the other side, we've got the two color schemes. There's actually three in there. We're showing one, not two. There you go. Quite plain, obviously, because they are mainly fabric. Uh, there's no panel lines as such. Um, so it's going to be a lot in your weathering and painting on this. Uh, and the schemes are quite bland, really. So it's going to take a little bit of uh, imagination to make this thing look interesting. Right, so let's see what we got in the box. It's a nice top opening box, oh, which is normal from ICM, and then inside it's a box within a box, so nice little touch. So it flips open, and away we go. So inside we've got nicely bagged, tin they're all together, but they all are in there. It looks like there's three screws in there. We have the instructions, and the decals. So it's a no-frills kit. It is not like, oh my god, look at all that. But it's £27.99, it's a cheap 30 second scale kit, and uh, being ICM, with the reputation they're getting lately, it should go together just fine. So, yay, it's a sticky bag, I like sticky bags. Let's get that out, let's put that on the floor so it's not crinkling away, annoying everybody. So we've got three sprues, and four including the canopy parts. Oh my god. Crazy little aircraft, crazy, crazy, crazy. Right, so we will start with the main fuselage. So, as you can see, there's the main fuselage. Haha, <laughs> not big, not big at all. So, in centimeters, we have without the engine, it is going to be 14 centimeters. So, once you get that nose cone on, it's going to be 15, 16 centimeters, like I said on the box. So, not a big aircraft at all, <laughs> tiny. Now, first impression is the plastic looks very good. Uh, it's a new frills kit, but the molding's nice, there's no flash. Everything appears to be nice and crisp. Um, and I can't see any issues on first glance. Like I say, two fuselage halves are there. Uh, we got what look to be uh, elevators and the rudder, yep. Got engine parts, we've got wheels, cowlings, so on and so forth. And I can't see any real issues there at all. It's all very nice and crisp. You can see the texture detail. So now coming close, you have to have a look. So we go for all the parts. Like I say, where there's texture detail built in, I'll stop and have a look. So there's some there, as you can see, just there. I'm assuming. Right, what have we got there then? They've got to be elevators, no? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> but they've got stretched fabric detail on them, as you can see. On to the bottom. They have got to be elevators. And again, 
We've got a nice stretched fabric detail. We've got one side of the fuselage. Again, it's very no frills. It's just that type of aircraft. Like I say, there's no panel lines. It's going to be all in your painting and weathering with this to make it look interesting, not boring. Again, that stretch skin detail on the tail there as well. Very nicely done. Another elevator at the back. I've got the wheels. Again, no frill wheels, just as they are on the real thing, but nicely depicted. Some nice surface detail there. We've got the rudder. And some engine components there, like a cowling, to be honest. And then the upper surface cowling to the front of the uh, fuselage. So all in, doesn't look too bad. Uh, they're all nicely crispy moulded. I can't see any real issues. Ejector pins. Well, there's one on the cop at the bottom there, but I'm assuming you're probably not going to be able to see that, really. Uh, everything else appears to be fine. Can't see any sinkholes or sink marks. Well, there is... Ever such a slight one there on that surface detail inside, but it doesn't appear to actually reflect through from underneath. But yeah, there shouldn't be any real issues there. The rudder's maneuverable by the look of positionable. Yeah, no issues there at all. So there's that one. Have a look at the wings, upper and lower surfaces. We've got landing gear struts, uh, the spinner. Part of the uh, exhaust intakes, by the looks of it, underneath. Engine cowling, landing gear doors, and again, very nicely done. Again, on the upper and lower surfaces of the wing, I'll come around all and have a look. We'll start at the top here, so we've got the nose cone itself. What would it look to be uh, landing gear struts, landing gear cover, there's one. Then we've got the, I'm assuming that's going to be uh, part of the exhaust system underneath, or is it an intake? Can't quite tell. Got the prop, just trim bladed prop. With the cowling, with a couple of cowlings. We've got an upper wing surface there. Does some recessed and raised detail there, which is very nicely done, nice and crisp. And then on the wing surface, I'm assuming on the real thing, this is the actual alloy metal part. And then the rear, as you can see, has the fabric detail built in as well. Um, Flapper ons on this, the flaps and ailerons are all combined in one. Um, so this entire rear surface is the flapper on. So nicely built in there. And then we go to the actual underneath part. I'll spin it around to make it easy to look at. Again, we've got raised. We get the white bounce back. Here we go. We've got raised and recessed panel detail. And that stretch fabric detail again as well. Landing bay doors. Nicely done. Yeah, nice and crisp. It's very, very nice moulding. Really is nice. And again, we're onto the upper wing surface again. Same as the other side. The cowling of some description must be one of the engine ones. Yeah, that goes around the side. The front engine nose cowling as such. Very nicely done. Another landing gear. Another part of landing gear doors and more struts for the landing gear itself so again another nice part I'm not gonna be here all day with this there's only three sprues there's not a massive amount of parts so we're not gonna be pouring over these sprues all day long now we have some very delicate parts and very nicely molded as well so on here we've got a bulkhead we've got a seat my god it's a no frill seat <laughs> very comfortable uh we got the control stick rear landing gear some uh controls for the cockpit the engine itself, very nicely done actually, really nice, I'm assuming we've got some exhaust parts, now we've got some small parts there that do appear to have an ever such a slight, it's not flash, it's like a seam that's going to need removing, um, I don't know how it's going to show, I'm going to zoom in, I'll show you what I mean, it's not a problem, just wants to be aware of it, look at like that there, oh come on, focus damn you, there we are. So if you look at that part there, you'll see. Oh, you can't. Let's go to these. There we go. Now you can see. Just there. You see halfway down. There's like a little seam of plastic. So you just have to run a sander over those quickly. It's not really flash as such. It is technically, I suppose. Um, but as long as you're aware of it, it shouldn't be an issue. You can just see it there as well on that part. Excuse my nails. I've been painting today. 
and you see it on the exhaust part. So you just have to run a sander over. I wouldn't say it was flash as such. It is, but it's just one of those things. A cheap kit. And to be honest, on the exhaust, it might actually be meant to be there. So double check that. But it's not, not an issue, really. It's just a, something to be aware of as you're looking. Uh, what else? We got? I say we've got bulkheads. We've got there. I'm assuming that's a copper floor. Let me zoom in a touch. Uh, we've got more and more small components. They're very crispy done. Apart from that little seam on each one, they are very well done. We've got the engines themselves, engine itself rather, which is actually quite well done. Nice uh, recessed and raised detail on that. Very cool. Uh, we've got the two, oh, top of my head, 7.62 machine guns, I believe they were. Oh, I can't think what they're called now. Uh, begins with an S, I forget. Uh, there they got some more smaller parts. I think they're nicely done actually. Not too bad at all. The Olios for the landing gear there as well. They're very nice. Like I say, just some care on some of those smaller parts. You're not going to have any issues there at all. Uh, on the whole, they don't look too bad. And again, you know, it's a £27 kit. It's not an armor leg. It's a tiny little aircraft, it'll be a good little introduction to 30 second scale. It's not going to take a lot to put together. Um, and Well, it doesn't look bad. Apart from some of the parts on those smaller parts, on the whole, the actual sprues themselves don't look too bad. Uh, I can't see any real issue with those. Like I said, it's a very simple aircraft, so um, build up be, should be pretty quick to be honest. So let's have a look at these clear parts and see what we've got in here. So we have the instrument panel which is a decal, I've already seen it in the box. Let me get that white bounce back again. There we go. And the front canopy as well. Yeah, just the front canopy on this. Sent it would have been an interesting aircraft to fly. Gun sights there as well. I'm assuming we've got some nav lights at the back as well. Now, the plastic itself, what is it like? It's not bad. Optically, it's not... It's not fantastically clear. But it's certainly adequate enough to do the job of an issue. Um, there's a lot of distortion through there, but it's not going to be that much of an issue. I've seen a lot worse before. Um, obviously, it could be better, <laughs> by all means. But I have seen a lot worse. And for the little single curve piece, it is, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's certainly going to pass for a clear canopy. The little gun side's not too bad either. That's pretty well depicted. Getting a little bit of clean up here and there. There's a few locator plugs on there. Instrument panel. Again, there's no decal for this. That's going to look too bad. Uh, and then I've lied to the back. So again, another well molded sprue. Um, so it would have been an interesting thing to fly this with that open canopy. For sure. Especially if it was raining. Yeah, that's going to be a long, boring flight. Well, actually, I take that back. It probably wasn't boring. It's was probably absolutely terrifying. But hey, we'll see. Right, let's have a look at the decals and then we'll go through the instruction book. So, single sheet of decals, as with normal, with Russians, uh, no stencils. Literally, this is what you get, suck it up, deal with it. So we've got one single decal sheet. There's actually quite a lot on there, a lot of stars, different types, different sizes. Uh, there's the instrument panel decals at the bottom there. They don't look too bad. Actually, they look pretty good, to be fair. Um, so not a lot of markings, um, a few different slogans, emblems to choose and pick, but overall, not going to be an immense amount of decal involved. They don't look bad, they're uh, semi-gloss, they're not really gloss, they're not really matte, I'd say they're satin, they don't appear to be too thick, they all appear to be pretty much, in, yeah, they're all in register. They're all legible, even the little tiny numbers down the bottom are all perfectly readable. And again, not bad at all. There's no maker on them, so uh, no idea where they're made by. But on the whole, they don't look too bad. Now, the instructions. So, on the front, we've got some information about the aircraft. Uh, I think we've already covered that, but we're going to have a little look. You can pause that and have a look. So, let's have a little look. So... 900 horsepower engine, 462 kilometers an hour, so pretty quick for a little thing. 440 kilometer range, ah, there we go. 
for 7.62 SHKAS, and it began with an S machine guns on there as well. Um, so we've got that, it looks like Russian or Czech and uh, English. Uh, colours used but in Revel and Tamiya, so uh, not a bad mix, not too bad. Uh, at the bottom, uh, flat back, flat black, dark green, flat light blue, aluminium, light steel, steel, sorry, light grey, steel, gun metal, clear red, clear green, gunship grey, and flat yellow. And your legends down the bottom, so you go assembly step, do not cement, optional, make two, use colours, partner for use, and assembly unit as well. And the website down the bottom, should you wish to go and have a look. First page, as always, the obligatory uh, sprue layout. Uh, nice and clear, nice large pictures, well drawn, well depicted. As said, any parts not used are in red, and it literally is those two parts, which are out of camera, duh, at the top, just there. They're the only two parts not used. Everything else is used. And we start assembly with the wings, unusually. So upper and lower wing surfaces attached, upper and lower uh, surfaces of the flapperons, glued in place, that little cowling at the front there as well. And we start with the cockpit, start with the bulkhead, headrest, feet con uh, foot controls, uh, cockpit floor, assembling it, instrument panel, so on and so forth. Getting down to the seat, that's a very, very uncomfortable looking seat, got to give that. Uh, flight controls inside the cockpit as well. Nice, clear, concise instructions, very well laid out. No going wrong there. So what's the colour call out then? Is that the O1? A uh, oh why did I do that? So the call out the colour call out of the letters in red, which I always find annoying because you're constantly back and forth at the front of the book. Um so yeah the colour call out in red, they're the part numbers. And uh, that's the step number at the top. So yeah, a little bit annoying that I'd rather just say, you know, blue, whatever. On to the rudder, getting a few large halves together, the elevators are there. Attaching the upper and lower wing surfaces of fuselage, that's pretty straightforward. Doesn't look too difficult. Ah, there they are, those parts here, they're the front of the uh, elevators, of course they are. I didn't see those inside, so there we go. That explains that, cleared that up for me, I wonder how they were, those parts, where I know now. Engine assembly. Again, looks pretty straightforward. You're not going to see barely any of it through the cowl at the front. So how much you weather that or paint it is entirely up to yourself. But literally, you are going to see barely anything of that through the front. Which is a bit of a shame. Whether you've got the option to leave that little uh, cowl in removable. Um, I don't know. It is showing it all as assembly there as one, as you can see. I'm popping it on. So if you could leave that loose... I do not know. Getting the cowlings on around the edge, it's probably going to be a no then, I think. Landing gear, yeah, instructions are really good. Nice and clear, no issues, not confusing. I don't like the colour call out for the numbers, uh, for the colours, the numbers, uh, the letters, god damn it. Get there in the end. Not a fan of that. Overall, does not bad, looks pretty, fairly simple assembly. Yeah, good instructions. On to the colour scheme. So there's three, I believe, if I remember right. So we've got the 67 Fighter Regiments, uh, South Front Summer 1941. So simple blue over green, uh, 72, is it? Over it, fairly simple. Again, same scheme, but with the, uh, wherever the hell that says down the side of it. This is the 72nd Mixed Regiment, the Northern Fleet Aviation. Again, Summer is 41. Again, and then we have, oh there's four schemes, we have a silvery coloured one, or grey rather, so D, we are in colour D is, da -da, aluminium, so there you go, aluminium colour, at the top, quite interesting, and then back down to your green over blue, with the number 27 on the side. Right, there we go then, so yeah, that looks a good little kit, I'm not going to lie, it's very simple. Uh, with just three sprues, 150 odd parts, it's not going to take a long time to build. Uh, so you're looking for a kit to, you know, get started in 30 second scale. It's a good one to pick out the, uh, the stash and have a go of. And a 27.99 doesn't break the bank either. Um, it's not huge, so again, it's not going to take up a lot of space. But being bigger, 
it's going to give you more possibilities for weathering and painting, etc. And with this being quite a plain, sorry about that, fuselage, it's going to be all in the paint and the weathering to make this thing look interesting. You've got no panel lines to play with, so you're going to have to pull out all the stops of the paintwork and weathering to make it look good. But for me, it gets a thumbs up. It's a good little kit. Uh, hopefully it'll go together well. I know the other ICM recent releases are getting good press. I've got one or two of them. And uh, they look great. They really do look good. They've really uh, upped their game recently, uh, for sure. So I look forward to building this at some point. It's going to go in my stash. And, uh, yeah, it looks good. Not a lot of decals as well. So, like I said, it's a perfect little step into 30-second scale. Um, and it does look very promising as well. So there you go, twenty seven ninety nine from Hannant's. Uh, it's not dear at all. Very cheap little kit, and uh, yeah, look forward to building that at some point in the future. There you go. Uh, so there you go. As always, check out the Facebook page and forum, International Scale Modeler. Forum is free to sign up for, as is Facebook. You just need to like it. Um, loads of giveaways on the forum. We have monthly giveaways. We have group builds and sigs with prizes. Loads of information on there. You name it, it's on there. You can share YouTube vids on there. Any advice you want, you will find it on there. Very active, very busy. Facebook page is immensely busy. Uh, 12,500 members now. Uh, I think we've got just coming to 7,000 on the forum. So very, very popular pages. Sign up to the page. The page and the forum are treated exactly the same. They're both policed the same kind of thing. We don't have swearing. There's no bullying. No nitpicking people's work. Your work won't be critiqued unless you ask for it. Uh, so you're safe. Post any work to know that somebody's not going to, you know, pick out your, you know, pick the wrong colour um, for your wings or your landing gear or something. No one's going to point it out. Um, and a lot of people appreciate that. Some people don't, obviously. They like to get their saying. Uh, but for four years we've been running it, everybody loves the way it's run. And uh, it'll always be run that way. So head over there. you are a very friendly place. Say hello. Introduce yourself. Um, as always, check out the live show as well every Friday on this channel. Uh, at 7.30 UK, 8.30 Europe, 1.30 Central US. We go live. It's a three, four hour show. We have prizes, we have guests. Uh, we have looking at your work on the Facebook page and the forum. We've got all the latest kit releases. What myself and the live crew have been building and buying. We've got chat with you guys in the chat. There's a live chat attached to YouTube, uh, which is very, very popular. We get around 170 viewers every week. And uh, the guys contribute in the chat on the side. Very, very interesting. And for the whole year we've been doing them, it's proved very, very popular. And uh, we will be doing them for the foreseeable future. We love doing them, and uh, getting you guys involved is absolutely fantastic as well. And as always, again, go check out umpretail.com at www.umpretail.com. That's myself and Lee's business. We've got all your modeling needs there. We get from thinners, cleaners, washers, sanders, primers, masking tape, form card, model kits, resin kits, you name it, we've got it. Airbrushes, the lot. Uh, head over there and have a look at umpretail.com. And uh, there you go. So thanks for watching the review. I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.